I always used to think that gaming keyboards were, well, a scam. You'd pay over $150 for some monstrosity that was covered in RGB and looked like a console for a spaceship. Then the Wooting 60HE changed everything, with a mind-boggling amount of practical features that actually have an impact on how you play, it completely changed the meaning of a gaming keyboard. It's no surprise that eventually you'll end up with other manufacturers racing to copy Wooting. And when some of the biggest brands in gaming starts making them, well that's when it gets quite interesting. SteelSeries and Razer have released their own version of the 60HE. With their $50 billion research and development budget, I'll be putting the SteelSeries Apex Pro Mini and the Razer Huntsman V3 Pro Mini against the Wooting 60HE. And at the end of this video, we will find out which one is the best gaming keyboard. I've got four categories to go through and I'll rate each keyboard out of 10 for each category. Then I'll add all those points up and will finally know who is the winner. The first category requires taking these keyboards apart, just so we can see what efforts have been made when it goes into building these products. Already we can see some interesting differences. For the 60HE I had to remove just 5 screws to take it out of the case. For the SteelSeries Apex Pro I had to remove 6. It also revealed these, which we'll look at a bit later. For the Razer Huntsman V3 Pro Mini however, I had to remove 12 screws from the top case. I then had to remove 3 more screws to detach an additional PCB that was attached to the bottom of the case. The Wooting 60HE is a great example of a simple design. The case is rather bare bones with no adjustable feet. Taking this apart is incredibly easy and the keyboard also comes with some spare switches if you need to make any repairs. Despite this keyboard being quite simple construction wise, it's done very well. And the inclusion of dampening foam on the case and between the PCB and plate also helps gives this keyboard a quality feel. The Apex Pro Mini is almost identical to the 60HE. There are some changes though. The Apex Pro Mini has no dampening foam between the plate and the PCB. In fact, there's no dampening foam at all on this keyboard. It has these. Their weights, which is quite bizarre. This might be to fulfill the age old trick of heavy equals quality. Needless to say, this is absolutely wasted and could have been filled with dampening foam instead. The case of the Apex Pro Mini is okay. It has adjustable feet and a little compartment. Hello. For keycap puller which is somewhat pointless. Despite it being easy to take out like the 60HE it might not be so easy to repair as there's additional LEDs that have been added which are soldered to the PCB. So the quality of this one is okay but it could be so much better with dampening foam at the very least. The Huntsman Mini does things a bit differently because technically its case is the top plate. There's the PCB and the additional module that I showed earlier. There is a very thin piece of dampening foam which has a lot of cutouts for all the standoffs. Surprisingly, there is some rubber mounts underneath where the bigger keys are placed. The sound test will show later if these actually do anything though. There is a bit of polish like the Apex Pro with the case having adjustable feet and on all the switches there's stabilizers. Despite the different structure of the keyboard, nothing really stands out that much better than the previous two quality wise. The 60HE I'll give an 8 out of 10 as the simplicity really pays off and it's also easily repairable. The Huntsman Mini V3 Pro I will give a 7 out of 10 and the Apex Pro Mini gets a 5 out of 10 because they added weights and a stupid compartment for a keycap puller instead of dampening foam. Next, this category is crucial for people like me. Degenerate goblin-like creatures with no sense of personal hygiene. So how easy is it to clean these keyboards with little time and effort? A regular person should be able to look at these keyboards without being repulsed by it. For the 60HE, one of the biggest drawbacks is that it sits lower inside the case. Ideally, I want to give this a quick clean without moving the keycaps if I can get away with it. But even after brushing, there will still be a lot of dirt still remaining. The top plate of the Apex Pro Mini sits flush up against the case, which means that brushing out the dirt with the keycaps on is still an option. 
The downside for both of the Apex Pro Mini and 60HE though is that dirt can get underneath the plate and the PCB. The Husband Mini is by far the easiest though, you just give it a brush and all the dust and other hazardous materials are swept away. As there's little to no gaps on the top, there's less mess that can get further into the keyboard. So the Huntsman Mini is a clear winner with it being a 10 out of 10 to clean. The Steel Series does a good job as well, but the gaps in the top plate do hide other horrors within. So I'll give it an 8 out of 10. The 60 HE would require too much effort and would likely require taking off the keycaps or even using a hoover. And that's just asking too much. So I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Next up is a very important factor in keyboards, as this could push away all your friends and family if they can't stand the sound of your obnoxious typing. All of these keyboards are completely stock, I have not made any modifications to them at all. So now let's have a quick sound check. Let's eliminate the biggest offender. To me, the Huntsman Mini is the loudest and most annoying. I'm in an office with thin walls and I had to stop using it because I didn't want to disturb others on the same floor. It's surprising as the little rubber standoffs that I mentioned earlier, which supports the large keycaps, actually do something and I would just assume they'd add it for the entire keyboard. Despite it having some dampening foam, it sounded worse than the one without any of it, which is a very big surprise for me because this means that the Apex Pro Mini could have sounded better with a bit more effort put into it. It's not great, but it's not as bad as the Razer keyboard. The Wooting I think is the best. The stock experience isn't amazing, but for a gaming keyboard it's very good. I'd give the Wooting an 8 out of 10, the Apex Pro Mini a 6 out of 10, and the Huntsman Mini a 4 out of 10. And now it's time for the biggest battle as we see what makes these gaming keyboards. It's mainly down to the switches that these keyboards have as they all allow an adjustable actuation. Instead of being restricted to whatever is built into the switch, like a 1.4 or 2mm actuation point for example, you can set that actuation point anywhere between 0.1mm and 4mm. And on all the keyboards this can be set per key. As an example, I sometimes press space by mistake, so I will just randomly jump in a fight, but now I can set the actuation to 3.8 millimeters, so now when I press, I really have to press it down to trigger it, and it doesn't happen by mistake anymore. Then there's the next big boy feature that's advertised with these keyboards, and it also gets a cool name, and that is Rapid Trigger. With Rapid Trigger, as soon as you release a key press, it can be triggered again. On the 60HE and the Huntsman V3 Pro, this can be adjusted as well if you don't like how how sensitive it is. On the Apex Pro there's no option to adjust this and it doesn't even say what the sensitivity is, but it feels pretty low so it might be within the 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter range. But this feature is great for anything that requires a constant and regular key press, so movement or using a spell and ability of cooldown. But now let's have a look at how these companies have implemented these features with their software. By far the worst experience of the three has definitely got to be the Apex Pro Mini. For starters, things like Rapid Trigger aren't actually enabled at all until you update the firmware. You then have to get to grips with the bloatware. I was able to get features like dual key activation working, but the UI is pretty poor. For some reason, a lot of stuff is confined into these small boxes that you need to scroll through. And there's no way for you to actually test anything unless you're in game. Razer's software, well, Brace yourself. It's actually okay. Obviously it's still Synapse, so it's going to take an age for it to install, load and update etc. But what's actually neat as well is that you don't actually need it. You can set the actuation point for all keys without it. And you can also get visual feedback so you can test out different heights to see what is best for you. Rapid Trigger can also be turned on without software and again you can see it working and make adjustments to it. 
This feedback is also shown in software as well, so you can see what you're doing with actuation changes. I did find an issue with dual activation where it just cancels inputs when you start to release the key, and the UI is also a bit hard to navigate, but I'll share my thoughts on why I think this is a bit later. To leave it on a positive note, the Huntsman does a cool game mode feature where it will just enable when it detects you're in game. Whatever you set, like the Windows key and Alt tab, etc., will just disable on its own. Now with the Wooting 60HE, I feel this is where it's in a league of its own. For starters, there's downloadable software or you can use the web app as well. Unlike the previous keyboards where their functions have to be built on top of existing software, this is tailor made for the keyboard and it results in everything being clear and concise. And all the features like dual key activation, mod tap which allows two different actions on a single key based on if you hold it or tap it, and toggle keys are really easy to use. What's better as well is that whilst you're trying these features you can see if you have got your functions working. As I said, Razer at least shows you the actuation working, while SteelSeries shows nothing. And Wooting even has guides on the YouTube channel on how to set these features up. I think for software and functionality, Wooting gets a 10 out of 10, because it's just so easy. Razer I'd give a 5 out of 10, because the UI is still a bit restrictive and the dual activation is a bit buggy. SteelSeries I'd have to give a 4 out of 10, because it's massively bloated. I know Synapse is, but at least it shows you your devices when you boot it up, and there isn't any way to check your changes before going in game. Overall, the final scores are Steel Series in last with 23 points, Razer in second with 26, and Wooting in first with 31 points. I was quite surprised with the other keyboards though, they are certainly better than what I had honestly expected from them, especially when comparing it to a 60HE. But I feel that Steel Series and Razer are both heavily restricted by their brand identities, and I feel it's really noticeable with their software. Wooting software is just so easy to use, and I think it's because it's been tailor made for the keyboard. Something that is just so easy is that if you have per key actuation, it will display the numbers and show any other functions you have enabled as a preview. Steel Series has theirs displayed on the side with tiny numbers. With Synapse, you have to hover over each individual key, and why is this keyboard preview so small? Despite the Wooting 60HE being a clear winner, I was actually kind of impressed by the other keyboards. They're better than what I was honestly expecting from them, especially when compared to the Wooting 60HE. I think as a standalone, the Apex Pro Mini and the Huntsman V3 Pro Mini are actually pretty good. In fact, they are massive improvements over gaming keyboards from a few years ago. The term gaming keyboard actually means something now because you actually get benefits from it, but they're still not as good as the 60HE. Both have been let down by their software and I think their attempts of doing something different just hasn't really added any benefits. If you enjoyed this video, well, you'll definitely enjoy the video that's on screen now.